Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Sunday morning in the garden, and I thought I'd do a follow-up video um, to the one I posted the other day where I was talking about uh, working with nature and what does that even mean. And it's really easy to understand um, the way I work with nature if you have some sort of um, uh, understanding of evolution. Um, the way evolution works is it takes a very long time. It proceeds in fits and starts. And there's lots of failed experiments along the way. But in general, the result is um, much increased diversity and complexity. And that, in a nutshell, is really what you're going for. If you want to do um, what a lot of people would call permaculture, or you want some sort of ecologically um, sound garden, you want uh, to not use chemicals, and you want it to be less work, um, it's really a good idea to learn about how evolution works and most of us, I think, um, where I grew up here in the eastern U.S. have a decent understanding of that as long as you went to a decent school and maybe not a Christian school. So what does that mean? Well, it's this is year 21 of my garden. So instead of talking about geologic time scale or an evolutionary time scale, we're talking about a personal time scale, human. And 20 years is kind of a long time. It's a pretty big chunk of my life so far. Um, and the plants that you see growing here, um, when I started, I had totally different plants growing here, for the most part. I mean, a lot of things I've stuck with because they're fairly easy to grow. Um, but even the plants that I've stuck with and grow year after year, I, they're growing in different places. And um, maybe I grow them in slightly different ways. So, over, But overall, um, the garden is almost totally different than when I first started. For one thing, it's expanded greatly. Surprise, surprise. But I've written about this um, in my blog. The way that people approach something like this is they want to design it all, like immediately. Design it and implement it and bada bing, bada boom, done. You've got some sort of food for us and then you don't have to work anymore or work minimally. Well, that's certainly not how it's gone for me. Um, it just, I don't work that way. But even if I did, nature doesn't really work that way because unless you are completely intimately familiar with your site and every plant that grows there and um, the weather patterns, even if you're familiar with the weather weather patterns, those are changing immensely year by year. So unless you are like some super expert on your site, you're not going to be able to do that. You're just not. So the best way to proceed, with, even though I've done incredibly high amounts of work in this garden, um, it's a little bit over time. Sorry about that. That was my finger. Um, just incrementally. And then um, I will have a great idea. And, you know, I'll do something like, okay, I buy this tree. And wow, now that whole area, is, as long as that tree survives, it's pretty much set. Um, same with my other trees. I finally got this area to the point where I could grow trees down there. Um, so kind of the way evolution proceeds um, very slowly and then with a very quick rapid progression when there's some sort of mutation that really works. Um, it's sort of a good analogy, I think. So if you're wonder if you're stuck, if you have um, analysis paralysis, go learn about evolution. The greatest things you will learn about how to 
be a permaculturalist probably are not going to come from permaculture texts um, unless you're going back to the very beginning, um, you know, Mollison and Holmgren. Everything else that I have come across is extremely site-specific, not focusing on principles, um, focusing on, oh, I did this and it worked great and therefore you should too. Just forget that stuff. Just forget it right now. Um, go learn, uh, go read a book about evolution. That's some more unwanted and unasked for advice from me.